G'day folks, it's Rob here and today we're going to do a little bit of an update on the aquaponics or fishless aquaponics. Uh, I think um, Steve called it organic hydroponics today. It's basically the aquaponics system with no fish in it. Uh, we're just running it without fish for the time being uh, until after we renovate the house and then we'll be popping some more fish in there and also going to go through a few changes as well. Uh, the main reason it's still up and running as such, even though there's no fish in there, is I've got nowhere to store the biomedia and also the grow meter as well while we're renovating the house. So I figure might as well have some water going through there, some nutrients and grow a little bit of food. Not as much as if there was fish in there, but you know, a couple of harvests here and there. Uh, but today what I thought I'd do is um, show you my little green leafy friend that's just off uh, camera there and also give you a bit of a walk around the system and give you a bit of an update as well on what's going on with the renovation. So I'll grab the camera and we'll have a bit of a wander around. So I've just grabbed the phone camera folks and I thought we'd start up here with a little bit of a look at my little friend. Posted a bit of a picture of this fella uh, earlier on in the week around the traps. It's a little tomato that's growing down through the seam on the lid on the radial flow filter here. It was actually looking a little bit um, worse for wear to begin with. But over the last week or so, I've been feeding up the system a little bit more diligently and she's putting on some nice green growth. Uh, the only issue is uh, it's not going to last very long because the roots are coming through into the radial flow filter. Oh, by the way, all these bubbles in here aren't normal with a uh, moving bed biofilter or bioreactor. Uh, they're from the fish emulsion um, I'm just using to feed up the system I put in a little bit earlier. It tends to create a little bit of this um, protein scum on the top. Oh, by the way, Jeff, I got the hydrostat. You'll probably see the thank you email before you see the clip, but thank you very much, mate. Um, yeah, I might use some of that in the system, but yeah, getting back to this little plant, um, definitely uh, going to have to come out, mainly because if, if I end up with too much of a clog in here, what's going to happen is the um, water's going to overflow through the top of the radial uh, flow settler, and I don't really want to lose all the water in the system. So uh, there's no fish that could uh, be harmed, but still... What I might do is I might um, just give a quick pH reading here on the water just to show you where she's sitting at at the moment and then we might open up the radial flow filter and have a look at the roots of this tomato. So there, we're sitting around about 6.9. So that's the last clip I posted was um, just basically explaining how I'm feeding up the system and also treating the water to try and lower the pH because we do have fairly high uh, tap water here pH wise. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, just put this down for a second, take this out and then we'll uh, have a look at the uh, roots of this fella in the filter itself. So here we go, folks. I think I've got you in shot there. We'll take the um, cowling off the radial flow filter. It's probably going to be a bit mucky in here. I haven't um, watched, cleaned it out for a couple of weeks. It's got a lot of um, scum, like you can see there, from the fish emulsion. And come over and check out this little root system. So there we go. <laughs> she's growing down. I don't know if you can make it out there, but she's growing down underneath this little inlet pipe there. So I've just turned my torch on and you can probably make out down in there the roots, they're growing down underneath this here. Uh, this is just a T piece I've put in there to stop the solids getting through. As you can see, it's not working too well. And the roots are going through to the biofilter. Uh, the reason why we're getting solids um, just floating around at the moment is I've changed the way the uh, water moves in the system by removing the, um, the cowling. So instead of being redirected down, that water's coming um, out of this outlet here, hitting the solids on the ledge, suspending them. And now they're going through into my uh, moving bed biofilter. Uh, not a huge problem though, because I do need to um, clean out the moving bed biofilter before we get some more fish in here. Um, all this is going to be dismantled and cleaned out properly. So all those solids will go through here into the biofilter, probably break down a little bit more mineralized through to this tank here where some will um, fall out on the base. There we go, now we're back in focus, fall down onto the base down in there and the rest of them will make their way down into the sump tank through that pipe to be split between the grow bed side of things and then back to the, uh, the fish tank or the nutrient holding tanks in my organic hydroponic system. <laughs> so yeah, I thought it might interest a few folks. And no, I'm not trialing a new deep water culture method. I did say it was just very tongue in cheek folks. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it gave me something to laugh about. I would like to keep it in there till we get at least one fruit off there, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, she'll probably just end up dying. I could though, if I wanted to, I could easily just um, take off some of these lower branches, make a little bit of a um, diagonal cut there, and then just pop her straight into one of these grow beds, and she'd strike easy enough and I could keep her growing. 
might be something I try, um, we'll wait and see. In all honesty folks though, I'm only doing it just for a couple of laughs, just to see how she goes. So, yeah, look at that, nearly all those solids have come off that rim now. I should probably uh, clean this out in the next day or so. I'll just um, pop this all back together, folks. So that's my um, tongue-in-cheek deep water culture um, trial, folks. I will be um, doing a deep water culture bed in the future once we rework this um, system and after we finish the renovations. Oh, just speaking of deep water culture, I had Pat, g'day Pat, ask me a question on one of the old radial flow filter clips about how I'd suggest he set up his system. I'm um, just looking for a few pointers. So I have let him know that I'm, I'm not gonna answer him just yet. I've actually been working on a clip this week, just showing um, how I'd set it out myself and hopefully it'll give him and a few other people some ideas as well. Um, unfortunately, um, through the week I tripped over and popped a uh, finger out of my joint, or its joint I should say. And um, yeah, it's been a little bit sore the last couple of days, so I haven't been able to do a lot, but I'm, yeah, it's feeling a lot better today. As you can tell, I'm using my right hand to hold the camera. A bit of a look at some of these plants. This is bees ornamental plant. Uh, we can't quite work out if it was a, um, a nutrient deficiency or whether it was just exposure to cold weather being in winter here. We have had a few mornings below freezing here. Only a couple though this winter. The main reason I'm thinking it's um, more got to do with the chill factor than nutrients is it's only on these exposed leaves. All these leaves up the back here that were hidden and sheltered by the Galangal, um, yeah, they're fine. So I'm thinking it's just a little bit of a chill on the leaves there. The Galangal's actually going so well, it's um, put out a few little pups down the base here. So we've got, um, that's, these have all come out through the winter. So this plant's um, loving the uh, milder weather we're having at the moment. It's actually the greenest looking Galangal we have. So there must be something um, going on okay in the aquaponics here at the moment. Uh, some of the other plants though, like the beetroot, they are starting to look a little bit yellow. Um, some of the, um, the smaller leaves are a little bit greenish, but again, it's just due to not enough nitrogen in the system, I think, uh, which hopefully will be fixed. Uh, the, the broccoli has bounced back a little bit this week. I am having issues with um, caterpillars though. They're just the white cabbage caterpillars, um, so, or white cabbage butterfly caterpillars, I should say. So I just need to spray these guys with some dipole as well as the um, plants out the front and around the patch uh, just to keep those guys off. The only other real pest we're having in the system at the moment is aphids. They're attacking my Okinawan spinach here. So these guys here, they'll probably just get a, well, there's no fish in the system. So I'm actually thinking about giving them a, um, a pesticide spray, something that won't leave residue in the system. Um, maybe a um, white oil or something like that, or a horticultural oil of some description. Um, so that hopefully will knock them on the head. It will be months before we end up with fish back in here again, just to let you know. I did notice we've got one of those little, um, that's a little yellow-shouldered black ladybug. A um, bit hard for you guys to see down there, but I've got pictures of them from elsewhere in the patch. They're good at knocking off aphids and bits and pieces like that. Um, yeah, so the, the chard over here hasn't done that crash hot either. You can see some of the chlorosis between the veins there. So whether it's a nitrogen or an iron thing, um, both of them we've had issues with. So hopefully it's just nitrogen now and I can keep boosting it in the system. Uh, the other plant we did have a few issues with was the mushroom herb, but it's just bounced right back. So it's looking really good. And over here we've just got um, a volunteer rabbit ear lettuce, lettuce that's come up. The Brazilian spinach was looking a bit so-so oh, for a while, but it's got some nice little green growth coming through. Uh, the one plant I'm sort of regretting I'm, I put in here was the cardamom. Uh, we bought this at a garden show in March. I put it in here just to keep it well hydrated. And I went to remove it the other day and the roots have pretty much will spread out all through the bed. So I'm just leaving it there for now. Um, it will be coming out at a later date and going somewhere in the ground. Uh, the other plants in here, the Okinawan spinach. Oh, actually, the other issue we are having is a little bit of blight in here, but nothing too serious, just on the older leaves of the Okinawan spinach. I should probably nip them off um, so they don't cause too big a problem. And just over here, if you're watching Huawei, um, I've got the um, Hoanok still growing on. And again, yeah, it's looking a little bit uh, pale. That could be due to the um, lack of nitrogen. Also, because it is a warmer climate plant, could be um, just not liking our cooler winter here at the moment. And the garlic chives, they're continually being mowed back a little bit at a time. They taste really nice on burgers actually. And another rabbit ear lettuce. 
Just quickly for you folks who haven't watched our clips before, it'd be great if you could hit that little subscribe button down there and then check the bell icon when it appears and you'll be sent notifications whenever we upload clips to our YouTube channel. You can come along and say good day. Uh, on to the renovations. Well, to begin with, we were knocked back on our first attempt at getting financing to renovate underneath the house. Uh, basically, we made the mistake, it's a little bit complicated, but we made the mistake of going too far in advance on our payments on our mortgage, thinking we'd have it as savings. Unfortunately, it, it counted against us um, due to the, um, the calculations the bank uses when it comes to um, wanting to borrow the money. Also too, um, we don't live in a very ritzy part of town, so the house values around here are a little bit below uh, what we were asking, unfortunately, to renovate the house. So uh, no big drama though. What we've decided to do is knock back uh, what we're doing downstairs. So we're, we're basically building in a stairwell down to a laundry and a toilet and a little storage area. And then the rest of downstairs will be concreted and battened off. And then as we get the time and after we ask for the council's final bit of approval, we can build our, in our own walls, put in our own windows and do it by scratch ourselves, basically. Um, we'll just have the slab there to work from. So that's what's going on at the moment. Um, we've had to send the plans back to the uh, designer and then he has to run them by an engineer again. So a little bit more cost there, but that's all right. Um, and then we can head off to the bank again and yeah, I don't think we'll have any problems securing a loan this time around. So having it redesigned like this means that we won't get what we want straight away. We'll have to work for it ourselves, but I'm fine with that. Uh, but it does mean that I can hold workshops underneath the house now um, underneath the back patio area, I'm going to use the pavers from down the back just to create a nice little outdoor setting or sitting area and we can do the workshops there. So um, that's still on the cards and I'm really looking forward to that. I've already got a few in mind, thinking about a wicking bed one and a basic aquaponic one um, where I actually run through how I'm setting up my new system. Um, yeah, as it's actually happening. So you folks can come along if you're interested and actually have a, um, a first-hand look at how the system goes together. So, But mind you, that's all um, down the track, folks. It might be six months away yet. We'll just see how it goes. But yeah, that's where we're up to anyway with the uh, renovations, and that's how the aquaponics is running at the moment. Um, just quickly, I will like to remind you that we do have the shop page over on our website for the time being. I won't be selling root pouches while we renovate, but I'll still be selling the Uniseals and the Venturis. And we also have the affiliate links both to Aqua Gardening here in Australia and our Amazon Influencer Store over there. So um, if you do shop at those places, if you use our codes, we get a little bit of coin and it all goes into the coffers for the renovations and we thank you very much. Oh, by the way, I've also opened up the, um, the membership or it's a little join button that's on the um, website here on YouTube. I offer a couple of perks, so you're just not donating, you're getting a look at the, the short little video updates I do for the folks at Patreon as well as some photos and there may be some hangouts coming on later on as well for you YouTubers. Um, the reason I'm doing it is I actually know a few people who want to support me but they don't want to use the Patreon platform for whatever reason, it's their own personal decision but they have um, decided that they would like to support me so that's the reason I've opened up that tab but anyway, I pretty much all should wrap it up there the sun's going behind the house over the road I do hope you're all well and happy in your own gardens and aquaponic systems are booming and I'll catch you all next clip cheers folks and have a top one